Don't be afraid to go back to the drawing board and don't let going back to the drawing board or not getting it right the first time. Don't make that mean anything. Don't beat yourself up because that's a part of your process. It's a part of everyone's creative process. And you have to let that be a thing. If you go into it, knowing it's going to be messy, you're much more likely to have fun. You're much more likely to stay way tuned in to your intuitive and playful childlike self. than you are the more rigid adult self that believes everything has to be right and stuff like that. Hello and welcome to the Empress Podcast. I am your host, Jessica, known in the online space as Jess the Empress. I started this podcast to help you be present with yourself, cope with chaos, and simplify your life. I do this by combining psychology, behavioral science, and the tarot. I have a background in mental health, specifically a master's in clinical social work from USC, and I'm a professional tarot reader. So get ready to have a nurturing, creative, and empowering experience with me as we use practical magic. Hey love, before we get to today's episode, I want to ask you to rate and review my podcast. Giving me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts would mean the world to me. I love knowing who's listening and what everyone is getting from the episode, so please take a moment of your time to share your thoughts, and I look forward to reading your reviews soon. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to the pod. I am so glad you're here. Thank you for taking the time out of your day, your evening, your life, and spending it with me. I appreciate you. Let's shift into the month of May. Happy Beltane for all of you celebrating. I'm so grateful that it's May 1st. It feels really good. It feels really good to be here. Actually, I want to adjust and get more cozy. Things have shifted like so quickly for me, which is great. I'm loving it, but I'm so tired. Hey there, coffee lovers. Are you tired of settling for boring coffee? I have a treat for you. Today's episode is brought to you by Heartwork Coffee Bar, your one-stop destination for exceptional coffee experiences. Whether you're a coffee connoisseur or just someone who appreciates a great cup of joe, Heartwork Coffee Bar is here to elevate your coffee game to new heights. A Heartwork Coffee Bar, they take pride in their craft because each batch is carefully roasted to perfection, ensuring that every sip is a symphony of flavor. From the rich and the robust to the light and fruity, they have a coffee blend for every palate. And here's the best part. For you amazing podcast listeners, Heartwork Coffee Bar is offering an exclusive 10% discount on your purchase. Just use the code EMPRESS10 at checkout and you'll save big on your order. Why settle for ordinary when you can indulge in the extraordinary coffee from Heartwork Coffee Bar? Remember to use code EMPRESS10 for that special 10% discount and treat yourself to the coffee experience that you deserve. Don't miss out on this fantastic offer. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thanks to Heartwork Coffee Bar for making today's episode possible. Now go grab your favorite mug, brew a fresh cup, and enjoy the podcast with the perfect companion, Heartwork Coffee Bar. Cheers. Okay, lovelies, let's shift into our message for May. What are we embracing this month? What are we embracing? Page of Cups in the reverse position. We're embracing our intuition. With the Page of Cups reversed, we're doing a lot of internal work in the month of May. And I feel like there's a lot of energy suggesting that we set aside time to listen to ourselves It's so important that we do that, even if it is just for a couple of minutes a day. Okay, lovelies, let's shift into our message for May. What are we embracing this month? What are we embracing? Page of Cups in the reverse position. We're embracing our intuition. With the Page of Cups reversed, we're doing a lot of internal work in the month of May. 
And I feel like there's a lot of energy suggesting that we set aside time to listen to ourselves. It's so important that we do that, even if it is just for a couple of minutes a day. I think we all have different processes for listening to ourselves. There are times where listening to myself actually looks like writing things down and then reflecting back on what I've written because it's my voice right on the paper. And then I can kind of see what's going on in my head in a different way, but that's a form of reflection and listening. I also feel like embracing that you are intuitive. When I work with people, a lot of people feel like they're not intuitive or they don't see the ways that they are intuitive because creativity and artistry are painted in such like specific ways, especially if you're looking at social media or taking in the opinions of other people. I mean, and this is just my opinion, but from what I've seen, creativity and intuition show up in a lot of ways and it can show up intellectually. You can have a mind that is a very intuitive mind. I think that people, again, only imagine intuition as like feeling and perceiving, which like, sure, that's a part of it. But I also feel like intuition is imagination. And if you can, let's say, for example, you can walk into a room and you can imagine how you want to shift all the things in the room. I think that's intuition, knowing like what would look good where. And I feel like sometimes people just kind of discount the ways that their intuition shows up. Another thing I feel like people are intuitive about is getting timing down, being able to take an overview of someone's day and help them organize their day better and really streamline how they go about what they do. I feel like that's intuition as well. So the Page of Cups is an invitation this month. I want you to just tell yourself that you're intuitive. I want you to believe that you're an intuitive person. Even if you're not quite sure how you're intuitive, even if you're not quite sure what your gifts are, first come self-validating like I have gifts. So I want everyone to really step into that space this month. And to focus on yourself and focus on your internal process. With the page, you know, looking at the fish, to me, the message I get is even if you have doubt, even if you have concern, I mean, hold that, hold that within you, allow yourself to be present with those feelings of doubt and with that, um, yeah, with that sensation and just say, okay, yeah, I'm noticing that I have this doubt. I'm noticing that I'm wondering a lot of different things, but I'm okay. I can hold this. I can figure it out. I can stay open to my gifts revealing themselves to me as my days go on. You know, what's unlikely to happen if you ignore yourself for your gifts to just emerge, right? I think that that does happen when we choose to pay attention to ourselves. So that's why maybe this card is coming up. May is about paying attention to ourselves, paying attention to our gifts, strengthening our intuition. Okay. So what are we leaving behind? All right, the seven of swords inverted. Well, I feel like we're leaving behind some distractions, which is probably really welcoming. Um, with the seven of swords, we do see this card as being like a sneaky card, a manipulative card. And I do think that those things are true depending on the context. But with the seven of swords, like our mind looks like it's a little clearer and a little more focused on what really matters to us. So the work that we've been doing previously seems to really benefit us in a way because we're able to say, you know what, I appreciate the distractions coming in, but I've already been down that road like 105 times. I'm not going to go down that road anymore. I know where it leads. I'm just going to go ahead and keep going and doing what I'm doing. And I think, um, I think that's a great sign. I'm happy to see this for sure. What might help you here, what might help all of us here is again, organizing and writing things down, getting your calendar out and planning for things. It doesn't seem like it's a very fun step in getting your life together, but I find that it's an important step in getting your life together is at least creating some type of personal system 
where you're feeling good enough to be able to go over the information and then take action on it in a way that makes sense to you. So your system doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. But as long as you have a system, I feel like you're going to be much more grounded again and focused and taking that aligned action than if you didn't have a system in place. So who cares if it makes sense? Who cares if you're walking around with like an old school journal and calendar? I have one. I have a paper calendar right here. It's not fully built out for the month of May yet, but I have that. And I have obviously my Google calendar with like all of my stuff in it. But the first thing I do in the morning, one of the first things I do in the morning, instead of looking at my calendar on my screen, is I look at my calendar in my book. And I just like it. You know, I just like being able to see the overview on paper. I don't know. It just makes me happy. So that's what I'm doing. And then I also have sticky notes all over the place, especially if there's something that I need to do um, or something I need to follow up on. I'll have that sticky note visually like coming at me, you know, so I can fix what I need to fix and do what I need to do. But I'm a visual girly. I need to have the things, the reminders, the alarms going off because otherwise my brain will just like forget about it. Yeah. So this is your sign to get organized, get your stuff together. Okay. Mind, body, soul awareness. What do we need to know here? Okay. The ace of cups. Oh, I like this. I love the ace of cups. Okay. Um, let's prioritize health and wellness. Let's prioritize mental health. Let's prioritize emotional health, physical health. There's some new beginnings coming up in May for you and for me, which is exciting. I think of the ace of cups as like these little moments of peace throughout the day that are offered to us that if we are distracted, if we are disorganized, it's much more likely that we'll just ignore them or we'll overlook them. We don't even see them as opportunities. Look, if you want more peace in your day, it is something that you are going to have to actively carve out and allow that to happen. Because as you know, with the amount of busyness that we all have, that's sort of the design of the game. Like we're supposed to be busy all the time and never taking a moment to ourselves. So in order to compensate for that, we need to be doing things, protecting ourselves mentally, emotionally, physically. And I'm going to tell you, it can be a challenge. I'll explain one of the ways it's a challenge for me. There are times where I feel exhausted by the idea of putting in the effort to like batch cook food, but I still have to go make the effort as tired as I am to batch cook food because I know my health depends on that output. My health depends on putting in that effort as tired as I am. It's always worth it because I have good things to go to when I really need them. And that sustains my energy and allows me to do all of the things that I'm doing in my life, right? So it's not like just work that matters to me. It's my relationship, right? With my partner, it's my friendships. But if I don't treat myself well, I'm not going to be a good person. (laughs) So the action steps I take are to help me be a better, more well-rounded individual. And I believe that I'm worth that effort as tired as I am. Same thing honestly goes for like, going on a walk some days or going to take a nap and resting my eyes. There's always this chronic thought in the back of my mind that like, I don't have time. I can't. There's always a million reasons why I can't. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. There's a million excuses why I can't put myself first. And I have to remind myself like, okay, those are excuses. Let me go ahead and center myself for the next like five minutes or whatever. So the Ace of Cups is saying, look, you need to introduce some things into your life that help renew your mind, body, spirit connection, whatever way that is. I'm going to show you guys an app that I have on my phone. This isn't sponsored or anything. Oh, they actually have a little, how cute. It's got a little um, quote. My quote came up for the day. (gasps) You guys, hold on, wait. So, okay. So I get a daily mindfulness message from this app. I'll tell you about the app in a second and what I use it for, but the mindfulness message today, it says the best way to capture moments is to pay attention. This is how we cultivate mindfulness. I feel like that's very like on par. Okay. It's called insight timer. 
Um, and there's the quote, which is cool. Oh, sorry. This is like a bad, you can't see it. Perfect. So I have a lot of different things that are bookmarked. So you can see that some of them are just music. These are guided meditations. Some of them are talks, which are awesome. But this app is great because I love anything that helps me just kind of chill out. And there's like literally thousands of things that you can choose from. And it's called the Insight Timer app. So I highly recommend that you do that and choose a couple meditations that just help you really like focus on yourself or, you know, whatever type of topic you're interested in, like learning on. Because we all deserve those moments of peace. But honestly, just like that quote said, if you don't make it happen, it's not going to happen. You have to pay attention to it and insert it into your life in order to feel the way that you want to feel. But it'll be worth it. The hard work is worth it when you're feeling more free, more centered, more balanced. I'm also feeling called to pull from the wisdom of the Oracle deck. So let's see what we get here. Yang. All right, rad. This one has like a little book that comes with it. And I like Oracle cards. I don't always use them, but today I just feel like we should. Okay. So this is saying the masculine principle of movement and creative activity, the power to make things happen, taking action. You guys, yet again, <laughs> could this be more divinely aligned? All right. So this particular Oracle message the yang represents the power of action, the energies that propel the world forward and manifesting thought and desire into concrete form. Now is the perfect time to act for you can easily build momentum and make headway. What you want will come to fruition if you proceed confidently. This card signifies new life and is a sure sign that obstacles have been overcome. There is no reason to hesitate you are the shaper of your destiny now. Hello. I mean, could that be more perfect? So again, if you want it, get organized and take action. I feel like those are just going to be the main messages for May for all of us. And what I want to say a little more about this, especially because the page is here, pages are pretty young. So this can point to being a little inexperienced in some things going back to the reason it's in, I believe the inverted position, it's saying like, it's a lesson that we're learning. It's a lesson that we're embracing. And we're always going to have new lessons and things that we're stepping into in life because that's just life. So allow yourself to be a little messy. The intuition is sometimes messy. Who cares if it takes you a little while to get your system? Who cares if you're writing things down and it's all kind of funky and it doesn't really, again, make sense to other people and you have to keep refining. Don't be afraid to go back to the drawing board and don't let going back to the drawing board or not getting it right the first time. Don't make that mean anything. Don't beat yourself up because that's a part of your process. It's a part of everyone's creative process. And you have to let that be a thing. If you go into it knowing it's going to be messy, you're much more likely to have fun. You're much more likely to stay way tuned in to your intuitive and playful childlike self than you are the more rigid adult self that believes everything has to be right and stuff like that. You want this process to be fun. You want this process to be something that's enjoyable. Because you, it's your life, you know, like you get to enjoy it. So I hope that this helps just kind of ease up some of the stress that can come along with creating new systems and organizing your life. Because of course, we know on the other side of that organization, there's usually, again, the thing that we're desiring, right? The systems that we create allow us to function in a certain way. And we want to improve that. I'm all about that. But again, just because if we're not there, it doesn't mean that we can't enjoy the process right now. And uh, yeah, I think that wraps us up for May. So again, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for choosing me. I will talk to you again soon. Bye.